everyone and welcome to my second ever podcast. I'm feeling a lot more confident for this one. Um, for my first one, I was really, really nervous. Um, I don't know why, like I'm just kind of sitting here chatting to myself right now. So I don't know, I was really, really scared, but I'm feeling a lot more confident for this one and I'm excited to chat to you guys today. Um, I'm in Ontario, Canada and it is fall here right now. And last week when I spoke to you guys, it was a cloudy, gloomy day, but today has been really beautiful. The sky has been blue, it's been um, pretty warm actually, although the wind was a little chilly, and it's evening here now, it's actually like not even 7pm yet, and it's already pretty dark, so you know fall is officially definitely here, but um, yeah, I'm cozy up on my couch again, and I'm just settled in, and I'm ready to chat to you guys. Uh, my first podcast, I let you guys know a little bit about my own story and my own struggles and everything that has led me up to this point today. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about something that I know a lot of you guys struggle with. Uh, perhaps you're struggling right now, and I'm, I'm so sorry if you are because I know, like I genuinely know how it feels, and that is panic attacks. So panic attacks is something that I used to struggle with all the time. I used to have them practically every day, sometimes multiple times a day. It completely took over my life. Um, I spent my life just thinking about when I'm going to get the next attack. I just lived in the cycle of fear and little did I know back then that that fear actually just kind of drives it and just brings on more panic attacks. But if you're really in the midst of it right now, this, that's a hard thing to grasp onto. It took me a lot of time to really get to this point where I'm at right now, where I know how to manage them, I think about them differently, and I've, I'm not so fearful of them anymore. And I feel like that's, that's a big thing, but I'll talk about that a little bit later on. For now, I just wanted to talk about quickly the, there is a difference between anxiety and panic attacks. A lot of people think that if someone says they're anxious, then they have panic attacks, or if they have panic attacks, then they have anxiety. But some people can pretty much carry on like normal and then just experience panic attacks from time to time, just when their stress is really high or when something has happened or, I mean, there's loads of different factors. Whereas somebody else could have anxiety all the time where you're just kind of walking around with that uneasy feeling in your gut, just not feeling quite yourself and then never have any panic attacks, just kind of walk around with that uneasy, dull kind of feeling of dread kind of all day. And for me, it was a combination of both. So I started with anxiety. I really, my symptoms really started to manifest around my mid 20s. I'm 31 now. I actually turned 31 last Saturday. So I'm officially in my 30s. But um, yeah, I was probably around 25 years old where my anxiety really started to manifest and I really started to experience symptoms. Um, I wasn't having panic attacks yet, but that was to come shortly after. Um, I was just kind of every single day, I just felt uneasy. I didn't feel like myself. Um, when you have anxiety, you just you just feel like something is just off. Something is just off in your body and that's because it is, right? Something There's something going on. And a lot of the time, we'll naturally just, our instinct is to be rid of this. We, we don't, it's an uncomfortable feeling. We want it gone. We want to be rid of it. So we go to the doctor, we get medication, we drink alcohol, we, we do all these things to just like numb it, you know, and put it away and just cover it up. But that's the problem. It, it just covers it up. It doesn't get down to the root cause. So, so yeah, so when I started suffering with it, that was also my I just wanted it to be rid of it, right? So, yeah, so anxiety is something that you just kind of walk around and feel uneasy all day. Whereas panic attacks is when panic attacks, think of it, I've just done a post on this as well, actually. Think of it like anxiety just on steroids. Like, when, like just think of the symptoms that you're experiencing while you're suffering with anxiety and imagine that like, a hundred times more intense. That's what a panic attack is. So a panic attack is this this major burst of adrenaline through your body and it just 
intensifies your symptoms to a point where you just you honestly feel like you're dying um i had my very first panic attack in a drugstore while i was in line i had been feeling this is the thing i had been feeling uneasy all day like just um i knew i had anxiety at the time i wasn't feeling quite myself and then when i was standing in line i was just really like focusing on my symptoms but not in a good way i was just like oh you know why do I feel dizzy? Oh, I think I'm going to pass out. Or my heart's beating a little hard. Like, oh, what's happening? Is there something wrong with my heart? Like, just these this negative spiral of thoughts that just really just kind of went out of control. And before I knew it, everything was a 100 times worse. My dizziness was genuinely to the point where I everything was spinning around me and I was completely lightheaded and off balance. My heart was racing. It's like, think of when you do some just really strenuous exercise and your heart rate is up but you know okay you know why it's up and it's going to come down so you don't really think about it too much my heart was like that but i was standing in line like i wasn't doing anything i was standing still so um yeah so i'm standing there and my heart is racing i'm dizzy i'm feeling terrible i can't breathe like i'm really really short of air and I am convinced that I am going to pass out. Like, this is it. I'm going to pass out in front of everybody. And I'm going to make a fool of myself. Or it, Not even that. It wasn't even that. I was more scared like I was genuinely going to die. So I knew, like, I have to get out. So luckily there was an entrance because the drugstore was in a shopping mall. But luckily it was right by an entrance. So I put my stuff down. I just kind of stepped up to the side, put it on a shelf, and I just ran outside and I just was in the fresh air and I was like trying to gulp air and like trying to do deep breaths but didn't feel like it was working and I, I was still like confused I had never had a panic attack before I hadn't I had researched anxiety but I didn't know anything about panic attacks so I was like what the hell like what's happening and I thought maybe like maybe I need to eat something maybe my blood sugar is low so I dug around in my purse and I found like, I, they had like a protein bar, like an energy bar in there. And I just like ate it. And as I was eating it, I was starting to feel a little bit better. And at the time I was like, okay, so maybe I was hungry, um, even though I had just had lunch. Like maybe I was hungry, maybe my blood sugar was low. Um, now I know that, now that I know more about panic attacks, I know that your panic attack reaches a peak and then it has to subside. So while I was being so intense and focusing on eating my protein bar and the act of like opening up the bar and I was just really diverting my brain's attention, uh, that was helping the panic symptoms to start to subside. So yeah, so I thought it was I was eating this protein bar and it was because I was hungry, but it was just me. I was actually doing something good. Like I was diverting my brain's attention and I was taking attention off of my symptoms. So yeah, so that was my first experience. And after that, it was just a case of me being terrified of having another panic attack. Like, I lived in fear, like, oh my God, I don't want another one of those. And the more I rejected this feeling and the more I thought to myself, I don't want that. I don't want to feel that way again. The more I drew it to me. And this is genuinely a whole nother story, a whole nother podcast. Um, the way that you feel, like your energy is what you attract so if i'm if you're feeling good and you're not scared and and you let go of that fear you're gonna be you're not gonna you don't only draw good things to you you're not gonna draw any panic or or any negative things to you but i did not know this at the time so all that i thought in my head all day every day was oh my god i don't want to feel that i don't want to be panic like have a panic attack again i don't want to feel those freaking awful like sensations again no so the more I thought that, the more I lived in fear, the more I fed it, the more the cycle continued. And so it went on. And I had panic attack after panic attack after panic attack. Now, it, it is a genuinely fearful thing. Like I, it's easy to say like, don't be scared, but, or don't fear it. And you're probably thinking, well, like how, how the heck do I do that? You know, like I'm freaking scared, but I'm going to talk about that more like in a little bit. I, I just wanted to explain something. So say, for example, you're on a walk and you're walking along this beautiful nature trail. You're feeling relaxed. The sky is blue. The 
the sun is shining down, you have no anxiety, you feel great, you're out in nature, you, you, where you feel you should be, you're having a good day. And then out of nowhere, um, from behind a tree pops, oh, not pops, but jumps a mountain lion and it jumps right directly in front of you on the path that you're walking on. Your body is going to immediately, your brain is going to immediately prepare your body for the fight or flight response and your body is going to be flooded with adrenaline, which is completely natural. Like this is a normal instinctual response because you're faced with the threat. So you have this threat right in front of you and your body is, is helping you to prepare for either running, running as far away as you can or attempting to fight this and if it's a mountain lion i don't recommend that so it makes sense and while your body while your body is being flooded with adrenaline and you faced with this real threat you're not going to be too focused on your symptoms you're going to be focused on taking care of what's going on like just managing it like that's all you're going to be focused on you're going to be so focused on this mountain lion you're not going to be standing there thinking oh why do i feel this way because your body is doing what it's supposed to do the problem with panic attacks is your body is releasing this adrenaline as if you're confronting a mountain lion, but there's no real threat there. So you're standing in line at the grocery store, something ha- triggers it, like there, there, has to, there, there is a trigger, like something triggers it, like maybe you're suffering with anxiety, and then you, like me, you start to think really negatively about your symptoms, and then before you know it, you're having a panic attack, and this is, your body is now you've worked yourself into such a state that your brain genuinely believes that there is a threat so your body starts to pump out that adrenaline your adrenal glands are pumping out this cortisol and your body is getting prepared to fight or run the heck away and yeah i'm a runner but another (laughs) that's another story so um yeah so i mean this doesn't make sense because you know that there's nothing there but your brain does not know the difference. You've, our minds are really powerful. What you feed it, what you're thinking, that is what your brain is going to believe. Um, so yeah, so that's the problem with panic attacks because when you're standing in line or you're sitting at your desk or you're on a bus or any, just doing something mundane and normal and an everyday daily task and you're not exerting any energy but your body is flooding you with all this adrenaline, it is terrifying because... You know there's no threat to focus on, so you're focusing on your symptoms. And you're like, why the, why the hell am I feeling like this? And the more you're worrying about it, the worse it's getting, and the symptoms are intensifying. And you, these, these symptoms are strong. Like these, these sensations are really, really, really strong. Your body thinks it's in danger. It is, it is fighting. So these symptoms are, are going to feel genuinely like you are dying. So... So yeah, so if you're struggling with panic attacks, I'm sure you know what I mean when I say like you're constantly in fear of having another one. Like you you live in fear, right? Like you, like even listening to this, this may be triggering you like, oh my God, like, oh, I don't want a panic attack again. And it's it's just a cycle. Like that's not going to get rid of it. Like it's just not. And I was thinking a lot before I did this podcast, I was like, I've had so many people ask me like I'm like I've had DMs on Instagram and people like asking me you know I I suffer with panic attacks and anxiety and how do I get rid of it and I really thought about this before I did this podcast and I I wish that I could come on here and give you a simple answer and like just say okay so do this like this is what you do and that you'll be cured but that's just not it's a process like for me It took a lot of like learning and research and seeing what works for my body before I got to this point that I'm at now. And that's my whole goal is to help you guys kind of try and avoid going through as much as I had to to get here. But because we're all different, there are certain things you're going to have to go through to figure it out on your own. I'm just here as a guide. So when I was really starting to struggle with panic attacks, I did research. I figured out, okay, it's panic attacks. I was still scared. Like... I still like would get a sense of and think I'm having a heart attack or or you know that headache that's something else like you you just do and often panic attacks can cause you to suffer with health anxiety and that's actually another post that I'm going to do soon so 
let me not get off course let me just continue on my stream of thought here so when i was really struggling i came across this book i was doing a lot of research online and i came across this website and this guy's ebook um i don't remember his name now exactly but i know that the, the program and i'll i'll link the name but the program was called panic away and it was designed to help you to start to manage your panic attacks and i was so desperate so i got this ebook and i was reading through it and the whole the whole main goal of this book was again talking about how that fear is what feeds it and he encouraged you to not run away from not run away from your panic attack i mean i guess how do you run away if only you could just step out of yourself i guess and run away and leave it behind but your instinctive reaction when you have a panic attack is probably to just like kind of you start to freak out like you cry you you panic you you run like for me i would always be if i was indoors somewhere like in a shopping mall or anywhere i would always need to know where the exit is so that if i started to have a panic attack i would leave like that's what i would do or um sometimes i would just leave my apartment and be halfway down the street going somewhere and I would start to get a panic attack and I would turn back and I would literally come back home like I wouldn't go out and I would always feel this horrible sense of like failure like oh like I gave into it again and listen on your journey forward that happens you're gonna have good times and then you're gonna have times like that and you can't be hard on yourself about it and I learned this the hard way but the whole point of this program was to not be scared of your feelings and he really encouraged you to next time you have a panic attack to just like lean into the sensations and just observe them and i was like how how on earth am i gonna observe my my sensations like that's crazy and i was so desperate that i genuinely i would have tried anything so a big trigger for me at the time was costco like i hated going there like i used to love going to costco but i when i started having panic attacks I hated going to Costco. Every single time I went in there, I'd have a panic attack. And it just kind of became this this place, this like it just became a trigger for me. So, it was all it's always busy in there. I'm sure you know Costco is always busy. Like it does not matter when you go, even if it's early in the morning, there are people there. There are people there all day. So, just the people and it was just like really big and when you were really when i was in, right in the middle of costco it just felt like the exit was like miles away and that just really freaked me out and then you've got these fluorescent lights and i and i get a lot of anxiety under these like harsh lights too so it was just not a good time so i figured well the best place for me to try and put this into action would be in costco the my like biggest trigger and i remember like oh god i didn't want to go there and um I, i just did it i went and i i this is embarrassing to admit but i always felt like more comfortable walking in like malls or in places like costco with the grocery cart because if i and it still happens to me sometimes where if i just have a cart that i'm pushing i'm just like okay if i get dizzy or if i get like really lightheaded at least i have this cart here and like it will prevent me from like falling over it's kind of like a grounding thing i i don't know so i kind of like walked in there like marched in with my cart um i love reading so and they have a really nice book section so i like marched over to the book section and i'm looking around and like i'm trying to focus on the book covers and like these different stories and the whole time my mind is like oh my god i'm going to have a panic attack and sure enough i in a few minutes of being in there I started to feel the build up of my panic attack and now my first thing that I would do is I would like run with my car to the <laughs> to the exit and I would just like leave because like I'm not going to deal with a panic attack and I'm not going to fall over but this time I forced myself to stay there and it was really scary like Uh, it's really scary like my I, my vision went blurry i was lightheaded like it felt like a genuine medical problem and i knew it was a panic attack though and i and i had read in this book that this happened so i just focused on telling myself it's a panic attack 
I'm okay, it will pause. And that's the thing that kept me going is that panic attacks have to reach a peak. And once they reach their peak, they have to subside. Like they can't go anywhere. That adrenaline can only go so high and then it has to come down. So I just figured if I could just wait, like just wait it out, eventually it will come down and you know, I would have done it. I would have survived the panic attack in the middle of Costco. So I stood there, I felt the sensations coming on. I was dizzy. My vision was blurry. I was freaking out inside. I, I don't know how I looked on the outside, but I was freaking out. Like usually at this point, I am out of there. I have literally run past people and had people stare at me. <laughs> but I was like, I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay. And I just stood there and I closed my eyes and I just like did some deep breathing. Like I find it's best to keep your mouth shut and just breathe in and out through your nose. Um, we tend to take in a lot of air and like very shallow breaths when we're panicking just into our chest and that can make you feel really lightheaded so I just focused on breathing in and out through my nose I felt terrible like it's not like this was like I didn't feel like this was helping me it was really bad but I kept doing it because I was determined and it lasted for I don't know maybe like seven minutes which is like a freaking eternity when you feel that way but then I could feel the symptoms were starting to come down. I was still anxious and I still wanted to leave, but it wasn't as intense. And I ended up just, I'd, I'd stayed there for a little bit longer after that. I even bought a few things before I left. Um, it was really still scary, but the intensity of the panic attack had passed. And let me tell you, like that, that you, you still, you still feel shitty, but like that, confidence that you give yourself when you're able when you're able to say to yourself i like got through that i did it like my biggest trigger i dealt with that like i did it it is a really good feeling and the very first time you do that you start to let go of a little bit of that fear like just a little bit of it i'm not saying you're not going to have another panic attack and you're not going to want to run away but the more you practice doing this the easier it starts to get like and, and it can take forever it can take another 50 panic attacks but just honestly like that's i think my biggest piece of advice is to just lean into your sensations lean into the symptoms like for me what helps is to kind of just you want to divert your brain's attention so if you're at home it's easier like if i'm at home and i start to feel a panic attack i'll immediately do something good like i'll immediately put on some music that makes me feel good i'll just do something i mean i'll do some freaking jumping jacks like let the adrenaline out like jump around like sing a song like do anything but this is difficult to do when you're out somewhere in public like i get that unless you're super confident then go for a few jumping jacks and just do it like just jump around like just divert your brain's attention but um yeah, the best thing is to, what I find is to put a label to my, my sensations. So if I'm feeling really dizzy, I'm like, okay, so I feel a little dizzy. I know that's going to pass. I've felt that a million times before. Moving on. Okay, so my stomach feels like it's in a knot. And like, I'll just go on like that and label it while I'm breathing in and out through my nose. I really find that that helps at least a little bit. Um... And I think another, I just want to name another few things that helped me. And these are still things that I do today because I do still suffer with anxiety. And if I neglect myself or I start like eating too much sugar or if I go through a lot of stress or I stop doing like my really long and in-depth yoga um, practices, I really do, I really do experience anxiety. And, and just like a few days ago, in fact, I, I've been through a bit of stress lately and I was out and I could feel, I could feel those symptoms start to build and like want to end up in a panic attack. But I'm at the point now where I recognize it for what it is. So I'm able to let go of that fear and kind of, I mean, sometimes I'll get a panic attack and it will just literally last for a few seconds and then just subside. So that's another question. I know people always ask, how long does a panic attack last for? And that's the thing. It's different for everyone. Like, it could last for a few seconds if you're able to reel it in really quickly or it could last for up to 20 minutes like i know that's terrifying but it literally could and you can have one panic attack and then not have another one for ages or you could have multiple ones a day it just totally depends so for me i really feel like 
um, labeling your your symptoms and the deep breathing i also adore this technique it's called alternate nostril breathing um, it's kind of difficult to explain on here i have a video on my instagram under my highlight labeled panic attacks and i kind of show you how to do it but it just really helps to like focus the stream of air going in and out so you're not taking in too much and it it really i love doing that like it I'll do it in public, I don't care, like it feels really good. And another thing is I'll always carry some water with me. I recommend carry, like what a good tip is to put a few bottles of water in the freezer and then just before you're heading out somewhere, take out one of the bottles and put it in your bag and let it kind of defrost as you go. Um, if it's i mean if it's winter where you are and it's like freezing outside then just keep some water in the fridge and then take out a cold bottle before you head out i find that having like sipping on some cold water and even just putting it like on your pulse points when you when you're stressed really helps for me i get when i get hot like when i'm in heating like now all the stores have heating because it's colder outside i start to get very stressed out when i get anxious like i get really 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 stressed out so i find that having the cold water helps a lot the breathing the alternate nostril breathing labeling your sensations and then and i talk about this all the time i love magnesium um uh, magnesium i'm not going to do a whole long talk on this i want to do a whole podcast on this but i love magnesium glycinate it is it's a mineral and it is amazing for anxiety um i take most people are actually deficient in it, in it without realizing and I take like six to eight hundred milligrams a day and I find that it helps me a lot it helps to, it forces your muscles to relax I mean it's good for all sorts of things but it's really good for helping to calm you down it helps you to sleep when I always carry it around in my bag with me whenever I start to feel anxiety symptoms come on I'll take I'll immediately take two so about 400 milligrams if you're really having a panic attack you can even take three like three 200 milligram ones i'm not a doctor so um this is just my own experience that i'm letting you guys know about but i find that that really helps within a few minutes i start to feel a little bit calmer um i also love passion flower drops um i keep that in my purse as well and i, I just take like a dropper full of that that's really in fact a lot of people take that for insomnia but I mean, I'll carry it with me and take it throughout the day. So I don't know if you can hear that screaming. This is the thing about doing podcasts is that I'm in an apartment building, so you can hear noises like all I can hear noise all around me. And of course, every time I sit down to record, there has to be people screaming for some reason. So... <laughs> If you can hear that, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is just reality, okay? So, yeah, so those are a few things that I do for panic attacks. Um, those are just kind of like quick, immediate relief things. Um, ultimately, you want to find ways to manage your panic attacks in the long term. Um, for me, two of the biggest things for me was changing my diet and yoga. Those were the two, honestly, the biggest things for me. Um, there's certain things I cut out of my diet, sugar, dairy, gluten, to name a few. And I was really scared to do this. Um, this is a whole this is a whole nother podcast that I want to do as well. But just touching on this briefly now, um, I had come across articles talking about the link between sugar and panic attacks and certain foods and anxiety. And I was really skeptical because at the time I... I was eating everything like I was eating McDonald's and Dairy Queen and like I loved to, I, anything like I wasn't restrictive at all and I figured that if I change my diet it means I'm going to be really restricting myself and I'm going to be eating like leaves all day like that's generally what I thought so I was like nope um, ignore that article no <laughs> but um, I really started to do a lot more research and I'm going to be talking about this more as well but um there are certain foods that definitely trigger panic and definitely contribute to anxiety for all sorts of reasons. Um, they can throw off your hormones. They can cause insulin spikes. They can um, increase inflammation in your body and contribute to cortisol being released due to inflammation, all sorts of things. But um, your food, every single thing you eat has an impact on how you feel. And 
when I was in the, having the worst anxiety and I was in the midst of my panic attacks, my diet was horrible. Like it was a, it's a fact, it was bad. And changing my diet and cutting out certain things was major for me, like absolutely major. It like changed the game. It was, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Um, you do go, you do experience withdrawal when you start to go, when you start to change and cut things out. I am. Um, I realized that eating healthy was not boring at all. Like I eat such good food and I'm not perfect. And sometimes I will indulge. And this weekend I had these really good vegan cupcakes for my birthday, but they had sugar in them and I paid for it for a few days. But gen generally, I really hardly eat sugar and I've just changed so many things in my diet and I'm going to be bringing out more recipes and I'm going to be doing a whole podcast about this soon if you wanted to know more about that. But that was a major thing for me. And that's the exciting thing about that is that it's not like all you have to do is change what you eat. Like that's the work that you have to put in. That's it. And you'll just start to feel better like a like a cloud is lifted. Um, and then another thing was yoga. Um, I try to meditate at the time but found it really difficult because my body naturally wanted to move i didn't know how to sit still and what i loved about yoga was that it's the deep breathing and these stretches and you and like it's it's like meditation you feel really calm really good but you're able to move your body so you're not sitting in one spot like desperate to move you're moving it's a moving form of meditation so i absolutely loved yoga and i still love yoga and i i do it if I skip just three days, I can feel it. So I love it. And let me tell you, yoga is not like for you guys that are into like very heavy, sweaty kind of workouts. Yoga can be crazy. Like I do some intense flows that have me dripping sweat. So just in case you like, nah, I don't want to do that. I like my sweaty workouts. Yoga can be really intense. So it just depends what kind of flow you do. It can be really chill. What can be really intense? It's up to you. So these are two things that help me in the long term because ultimately you want to get down to the root. You want to like fix what's wrong. And for me, a big thing that was wrong was I had a lot of food sensitivities and things that were triggering anxiety and panic in my body. Um, of course, stress, like I had a lot of stress at the time. And of course, stress alone can definitely conjure up anxiety and, and contribute to panic attacks. But just changing your diet can help your body better handle stress. So changing your diet can fix a lot of things. Um, of course, finding ways to manage stress. And again, I found yoga was a great way to do that. Um, I started to go for therapy. I needed to go for therapy in my early 20s, okay? But I just, I was scared. Like, I, I didn't want to go talk to anybody and like that's just weird like sitting down with a stranger and like talking about your problems that to me was just really strange and then when I was I went through so much like lots of ups and downs and probably about two years ago I was like okay um, I was at a really really low point and I was like okay I think I need to go talk to somebody um, I my anxiety was better but I the thing is like I had managed I'd gotten to a point where my panic and anxiety were under control but all the stress in my life was starting to bring these sensations up again and I just didn't want to go back there and I didn't want to go on medication again I'd done that I'd been there and it was just not for me so and I talk about this in my first podcast if you're interested in hearing about that but um yeah so I booked a therapy session I went let me tell you, you're probably going to cry. Like most people cry at their first therapy session. I was like, I'm not going to cry. I'm going to be good. But I cried. Um, when you have somebody sitting there and they, they just want to hear you and like they're giving you sympathy and just kind and caring and you're able to just talk it out. Like all these things that have been in your head that you think about every day, just talk it out. Um, it, it really, it felt amazing. And I was really fortunate that I found an, a really amazing therapist who, I mean, she was awesome. Like she, she really was amazing. And I still go to her now and then, like every time I feel like if I'm dealing with some intense stress, like I'll go see her and I know I should probably go more. And I think everyone can benefit from going for therapy. Like really I do. 
Um, even if you don't think that you have anything major going on, like we all deal with stress. Like just talking about things is so important. Um, and I feel like talking to a therapist is better than talking to someone like a loved one because they not a therapist is not emotionally invested in the situation. And it's nice to have that outside perspective and that outside help and guidance. Um, yeah, so everyone, I really do believe that everyone can benefit from a therapist. Um, yeah, there's certain supplements and things that can help as well. I take a really high dose B complex that makes a major difference because B vitamins really help your body to manage stress better. And when your body is able to control stress and it's not releasing cortisol in crazy amounts, then naturally you're not going to have intense um, anxiety and panic attacks anymore. So yeah, so it's like the deep breathing, the alternate nostril breathing, the cold water, the yoga, the therapy, um, changing my diet. That is huge, huge. Um, and then just kind of figuring out like what it is. I think this is a tricky one because you may think that everything is great in your life and now you've started suffering with panic attacks and that's it, you know, and it's hereditary. Your mom had it, your grandmother had it, that's it. You have it done. But I don't, I don't, like I do believe you have, like my mom suffers from anxiety and she's had panic attacks and um, also suffers from depression and my grandmother is, she has depression issues as well and it's just in my family like it, it's really really strong in my family so yes the hereditary factor does play a role but often that you can if you really really sit with yourself um, and really look at your life you can probably find some things that are contributing to the way that you feel um, a job you don't like um, having someone in your life that causes you a lot of pain um, not dealing with situations, not confronting people that are hurting you. There's so many triggers. Like sometimes it can be the smallest thing. It could genuinely be where your life is fantastic and you have a food sensitivity to gluten and you, you're eating sandwiches and you don't know that every time you eat a sandwich, you're having all this, this inflammatory response happen in your body and it's causing you to have panic attacks. Like it can be... There's so many things, but I genuinely, truly believe that you, if you sit down, you can trace it back to something. So if you're struggling right now um, and you really aren't sure what to do, then I would recommend just sitting with yourself and taking a pen and paper or getting a journal and journaling for me is an on-off thing. Like I'll really enjoy it for a while and then I won't enjoy it so much. And I, I find that I, the only times that I really journal is when I'm really struggling with something because it helps me to get it out of my system, to just write it out. Like when I'm happy and things are good, I don't usually journal, but journaling is actually really beneficial. Um, I started a gratitude journal where you just write down 10 things or three things or one thing every single night that you're grateful for that happened that day. And it's really eye-opening actually because even if you had a really shit day, um, just writing down that one thing that was good, it can be a really huge and like motivator and encouragement. It's, it's, it's really good. So that's something that you could do as well is you could start a gratitude journal. Um, but if you're really struggling right now, I would recommend sitting down with a pen and paper, with a journal, and just write, just, just write, just write how you feel, even if you just sit there and write, I feel dizzy right now, like just write something, and come back to it every day if you can, and just write a little bit more, if something really bad happened that day, write it out, like if something bothered you, and it's, you've been going over and over it in your mind, and even if you think to yourself, well, that's stupid, like I shouldn't let that bother me, sit with yourself and write it out like we need to this is the thing with therapy is you 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 getting things out and there's been times when i've been at therapy sessions where something feels really difficult and really complicated to me and it feels like there's no solution and then i talk it out and just hearing myself like say whatever it is on my mind i immediately know the solution and i'm like 
oh my god it's that simple like I'm here in therapy and my therapist is here as my guide to see that it actually isn't as complicated as I thought it was it, it's not that bad um so I don't know what's going on in your life though I don't know what's triggering your panic attacks but it really does help to get it out so if you're not willing to go for therapy or talk to anyone then just write it out like just get it out and find do things that make you feel good like I love singing like that's a big like that's something that I have a lot of um, insecurity about I have always loved to sing but I've never had any vocal lessons and I'm really really hard on myself about about it like oh I, I like like I would love like ultimately what I would love to do and maybe you guys can hold me accountable for this is I would love to start a YouTube channel where I bring out like where I just sing cover songs of like my favorite songs I mean I have mic and the setup right here but I'm like that's something that terrifies me I'll be honest but when I'm by myself and there's no one around and I'm able to just sing and like release like things and let it out I feel so good like that is when my anxiety is just completely gone so you need to look at things that you because a lot of us neglect ourselves and we stop doing things that we love we go to work we go to our nine to five jobs we sit at a desk we like just live life like just it's just a routine you know it just becomes this monotonous routine and we forget ourselves sometimes and all of these things contribute to panic to depression to anxiety to panic attacks so apart from just writing things out and getting things out of you find other ways to release to release things like sing like dance um do it like even if you hate singing or you don't think you have a good voice sing in the shower um just do anything like put on a youtube video to like a dance workout and just like even if you feel stupid just do it um if you love painting paint if you love crafting like get into that more just do things that make you feel good when you're doing things that make you feel good you're attracting good to you and you're letting go of that fear that panic attack that panic attacks have over you so so yeah that would be my advice to you and this is for this is for anyone like no matter because i know it's difficult if you at school and you have a panic attack or you're at work and you have a panic attack or wherever like if you're at home it seems easier because okay there's no one there to see you and you can immediately jump around but um start doing those things for the long term start looking at things that you're eating like are you eating too much sugar um are you are you doing any form of exercise like are you going for a walk every now and then because exercise is huge like it helps us to release that adrenaline and again these are things for the long term so look at those things like incorporate these daily things into your life like just slowly slowly these things will start to help you so that you can exp so that you can be free from panic over the long term and then for immediate relief do those things that i told you write it out um drink your cold water like always carry cold water bottle carry magnesium with you oh my god i talk about magnesium like you'd swear it's like my lover or something and i actually wrote an article on my website about it talking about my love affair with magnesium um yeah like i i don't go anywhere without that um yeah there's this there's this uh music as well that i find is really helpful um it's called i don't know how you say it mark marconi union i think and the song is called weightless and it's just instrumental and that actually they've they've designed the song to help lower your heart rate and to lower your blood pressure when you're stressed and it like that's something that you could um download onto your spotify onto your apple music and just play when you're really really stressed um i've also been I've also started doing meditations. I actually have a meditation, an anxiety release meditation. It's up on my YouTube channel. Um, and I've just put on Insight Timer, actually, which is really exciting. Inside Timer is this meditation app that I, like, it's really helped me. What I love about it is that there's so many different meditations from, like, two-minute ones to, like, hour-long ones. So there's you always find something that you have time for. So... I, my first anxiety meditation that I've created that's on there is just six, it's just six or seven minutes long. I think it's seven minutes long. 
um, because I just wanted to create something quick to help you that you can listen to even when you're at work on a break. Um, And I have another one going up soon, so I'm, I'm really excited. And that one is actually to help you with if you deal with panic attacks and to release stress. So when you're, at, when you're going out or when you're going to work, make sure you have your water in your bag, your magnesium, your, um, and have like, pack some earphones in so you can listen to a meditation, pack some healthy snacks like Brazil nuts are really good, almonds, um, things that are going to help to balance your blood sugar as well. Like I love bananas or bananas as they say here. Um, that's really good for anxiety actually and for balancing your blood sugar. Um, these are just things that you can do to find immediate relief no matter where you are. Um, and the alternate nostril breathing is, is huge as well. So yeah, so I think that's probably about it. I feel like I've touched on most of the questions that people ask me. Um, I know a lot of people want to know about my own experience and I hope that I've let you know a little bit about that. Um, I do, I will talk more about that. I've had panic attacks in so many places and I feel like it can make for some good stories. So, so yeah, but Costco was one of my biggest triggers. So, so that made sense for me to talk about that. Um, yeah, so I, I guess my homework is for you to just go and sit, just sit with yourself and just, just write and just go do something good for yourself today or tonight, whenever you're listening to this. Just when you put this meditation off, go do one thing that makes you feel good. Go put the kettle on, make some tea or whatever you like to drink and just spend five minutes doing anything that makes you feel good, like reading a book, um, calling your mom, doing some yoga, like anything that makes you feel good. I just, I challenge you to get off this meditation and go do that. If you're heading to bed, then... Make sure that you do something tomorrow that will make you feel good. Um, Or maybe pop in a meditation and listen to that while you're falling asleep. But you have to start to give yourself, you have to start to make yourself a priority and start to treat yourself um, with love, you know. Um, If you start to treat yourself with love, like just think if someone came to you and told you that they're really struggling with panic attacks, you're going to try to give them advice or support and you need to give yourself that same support. So, yeah, just just keep in mind that it is a process. It does take time. It doesn't happen overnight. If you have a panic attack and you freak out and you run away, don't be hard on yourself. Just try again next time. Like, just be gentle with yourself. Um, I've, what I'll, I've been putting some posts up, and I still have a bunch more posts that I'm going to do on panic attacks. Um, I'd love to have you on my Instagram. And in the comments, let's get a conversation going. Let's talk about it. Let's help each other. Um, And yeah, like that's that's probably about it. Um, I hope you've been enjoying everything I've been putting out so far. These are these podcasts are out of my comfort zone. Like I've been talking now for a solid 48 minutes. Uh, Where did the time go? (laughs) And if you've made it up until now, then I really hope that you've enjoyed this and that you've taken something from it. Um, you can always come back to it if there's anything that you forget or you just want to hear my story again and just know that you're not alone. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, I'm always happy to hear them. You can leave them in the chat area. We can we can connect there or on Instagram or wherever you'd like to. And yeah, for now, I'm just going to say hang in there. Uh, things do get better. They I know you've heard that probably a million times, but I'm talking from experience as someone who used to suffer from panic attacks constantly and who thought that there was no way out there is so hang in there um just stay strong keep your head up and yeah we'll talk again soon when i bring out my next podcast next friday so thank you for sitting in with me today thank you for listening to this and i'm sending you so much love bye